Happy Saturday, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the Bloom Burrow. Every week, what I like to do is a, uh, I hold a poll for the meta breakers of the week. And um, so these are all mythic decks with a 60% win rate that um, had at least 50 games. And uh, what I do is I post that poll, and then you guys vote for which, which one you'd like to see on the best one ladder. So this week, we got the uh, five color reanimator uh, by uh, Palpro. 128 and 82 for 61%. This was at the end of last week, so uh, kind of the end of the August season for Bloomboro. And uh, the deck is good against Mono Black and Orsov. Any of the discard strategies really don't affect this deck at all. Um, a lot of the creature centric removal also goes flat, so if you've got a whole bunch of wraths and things like that, then they're kind of negated by this strategy. Where you do struggle a little bit is against Mono Red and Rakdos Prowess. Um, considering your only only disruption that you're running is the two copies of the Bitter Triumph. So you really don't have an answer for the turn three slick shot show off. So we'll see how often we bump into that strategy. Um, no new cards from Bloomborough. So this is an old strategy that was, it's been around for a while. The Graveyard Trespasser and Kutzel's Flanker and Unlicensed Hearse and a lot of the graveyard hate that rotated um, it's no longer around has kind of enabled the strategy to come back. There's still Kutzel's Flanker, which can um, exile the graveyard, and there's still the um, the green guy that can exile the graveyard as well as destroy an enchantment and gain four life that I'm blanking on the name of that you sometimes bump into in Golgari. But for the most part, the graveyard hate is pretty weak. The reason why that's important is because the whole point of this deck is to use Squirming Emergence to bring back a disgusting um, large drop from your graveyard. So uh, you have the self mill off of the Picklock Prankster, the Seed of Hope, the Founding the Third Path, and the Cruel Somnophage. Founding the, cruel pa uh, Founding the Third Path can also replay a Squirming Emergence from the graveyard if you uh, happen to hit it in your mill. We've also got Jace the Perfected Mind, which is here to mill ourselves. And then um, we've got the Harvester of Misery as a way to kind of do a little bit of a board wipe. I'm not 100% sold on this card yet, um, but the rest of them are just kind of interchangeable large threats. So if you don't have these, you can run something else. Um, the four color version of this deck is not running a Tali, and so it's a little bit of a stretch to call this one the five color reanimator. Um, but that's really what makes it five colors instead of four, because we're not running anything outside of the Soul Tie colors. Uh, we also can reanimate Atraxa for value. One with the multiverse allows us to cast things from our library and cast things from our hand for free. And uh, gives us some good dig. Portal to Phyrexia, then being able to bring things back to the graveyard. Similar to like the Virtue of Persistence. And um, we've got the Vault Born Tyrant, uh, which can gain us life and card draw. And um, Atali and Bonnie Paul. Just, just as these like big kind of like bombs that we're trying to reanimate into. And uh, so I'll showcase the uh, deck on the, the best one ladder. I don't really, I don't cherry pick my games, so it's just going to be kind of what it is is what it is. And uh, if you would like to uh, have my thoughts on a deck of your own, remember that uh, every Tuesday we do a community deck tech. So look for that on the community tab. If you'd like to, uh, you can submit a deck there and I'll do my best to review it. Um, can only do about four a week, so we'll see uh, how many we get this week. And uh, then I'm going to be taking a quick little break. So this, um, I won't, I'll be gone for about a week. So um, we're going to have to kind of put things on hold for a little bit. And uh, but thanks for being a part of my community. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, let's see how it goes. All right. So first things first, we're missing blue to be able to start doing our mill. And we have two of our top ends, three of our top ends. So I really think that this is something that I'm just going to mulligan here. This is a little bit better because we have both colors and then we can start enabling the strategy. And I'm going to put back one of these larger threats. Uh, I guess maybe the portal. All right. So I think I can cast, I can play this on the first chapter and use it to cast the adventure side of Cruel Somnophage, I think. Otherwise, we're going to want to skip to head, skip ahead to, to chapter two. So this could be a little bit of a learning moment. <laughs> so 
I'm not sure if the adventure side actually lets it, because I think it's a creature card with adventure, so... Nice, okay, so we can then mill and do the instant, or just do this. And I think we'll just might as well try to get something like the Squirming Emergence. Maybe I don't want that in my hand because I don't have the third land and this lets me cast it. So maybe it was better to do the Cruel Somnophage. Uh, this is going to be a tough matchup anyway because we don't have any disruption for our opponent. Okay, I was kind of hoping that we would hit the Bitter Triumph instead of the Squirming Emergence. So we'll just chain more of these, I think. Maybe I'm supposed to gain the life, but I think the more that I can descend, the better. All right, we didn't hit the Squirming Emergence. Now, it's not cast it for free, right? So, this is free. Would allow me to kind of cheese out my threat. So, I think I just go with Decline. And we get to pick anything in there. So, do we want Bonnie Paul? That could be a good one. Gives me the double creatures, which can kind of gum up the board. There's also a Traxa, which is probably just GG. So let's go with a Traxa. Okay, and then what do we want? We want to do that again. Self mill seems okay. Uh, these are all tap lands. Two or fewer, two or fewer. Do we have any untap lands? No. Let's just go with the surveil. And then one with the, the universe we want in our deck. So I think I'll just take those three. Okay, so with the life gain off of Atraxa, we should be okay. And they're done. All right. Okay, we've got blue, which is the important thing. We've got the Squirming Emergence, but really no enablers. So this one's definitely a slower hand. Probably worth mulliganing. Because what, we can mill two. The Fathomless Descent will be for like two. And then we're not doing anything. Okay, so that helps us mill once. Feels like a better hand. We can put back So we want blue and green. Maybe we put back the blue, black, mainland. Okay. So you can use this to get back a, um, if we mill, we can use Squirming Emergence to get back the um, blue enchantment. And looks like we're up against the token control deck. We hit Atraxa, and we hit Founding the Third Path. So we're not up against any counter spells. Fathomless Descend. So next turn. Yes, yeah, so we just do this. Otherwise, we could like we could Jace and then mill ourselves. would also enable it. Okay, now we've got choices. Oh, shy one. The descent only descent only counts um 
permanent cards, so spells don't count. So I think what we want to do is just Jace ourselves. They are going to potentially have a board wipe. Which, let's see, I don't see. They have Get Lost doesn't hit Portal to Phyrexia, though. Alternatively, what we could do is we could Squirming Emergence to get back the founding of the third path. The downside with that is if they have a Get Lost. I think I'm just gonna try to hit one more permanent. For the sake of Phyrexia, I will keep watch. I okay. know where to find all the answers. Now we have nine. I can't think of any I mean they might be running a braid. In which case, it would be better to get the Atraxa. Because then we can find more Squirming Emergence from the Atraxa. If we do the portal, we can get the... Um, if they don't have an answer for it, though, we can get Atraxa back. So I'm just trying to play around, get lost. Oh my goodness, we bumped into Kutzel's flanker. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. All right, let's see if we can recover. That's pretty devastating. Okay, what do we do here? And my cruel somnophages are zero zeros now. Surveil. Okay. <clears throat> we can look for this end of turn. Like if we need to protect Jace. Oh, plans da, da, da. Probably could just scoop it up on the Kutzel's Flanker, honestly. Okay. Let's see if we can still manage. Okay, we've got the Squirming Emergence. Oh, we hit the Squirming Emergence. Excellent. Okay, so... We can get back one with the Multiverse. It doesn't seem bad. We could full-blown Jace and hit ourselves for 15. But... This allows me to cast the Tali. Sucks if they have another. Let's do it. Oh, I can't. It's not an enchantment. Oh, it's an enchantment worth eight. Okay, never mind. I could do several different things here. So I, I could do the Cruel Somnophage and still hold up the Bitter Triumph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry to make my opponent wait here. Learning new decks <laughs> on YouTube. Okay. I guess I'll just play out the prankster because, like, we can block the flanker if we want to. Seems okay. And now we can hit the one with the multiverse. Wait, why did they shoot their own dude? Why would they abrade their own guy? 
Oh, to bring it back with an indestructible counter. And exile my graveyard again. And alright. I don't think I have anything that can just win me the game. I have a, a, a difficult time with um, not believing in auto tap, you know, in a matchmaker conspiracy theories. Because, like, I haven't bummed it into Kutzel's flanker in, like, all of last season. I guess this maybe has spiked and there's more people playing it. Zero, zero there. That's no good. Bitter Triumph is looking kind of meh. We could discard a Tali, but this is at two. Not really sure what I'm supposed to do here. Guess I could have popped map tokens. Okay, so those are three threes now. Discard the Atali. And... Next turn we're going to go with Jace. I don't think I need to block yet. Okay, so all of these still not doing anything that we want, so... Exile the bitter. I'll take this for you cannot win. They have removal for the one three, I'm just dead. All your hopes and dreams. Okay, what are we at now with her we got twenty? Good game. Yeah, so... Graveyard hate, not great for this deck. Alright, we've got blue. We've got the Founding the Third Path. We've got four things in our hand that's not great, though. Yeah, this one probably has a specific mulligan. Five dead cards. Uh-huh. And counter spells could be a problem too, because if they counter spell this, then it's kind of like pancake. Because we've got a whole bunch of unplayable cards. Okay. Tough breaks. Should have mulled this hand. Just really gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna waltz on up here. I should I guess should just scoop this as well. So the original creator was running four of these, one with the multiverse. I'm having a hard time imagining when you would want to hit this over say in a you know an Atraxa. If we get to the 8 mana, though, we would be able to just slam all of these cards in our hand. So I can see that being an answer to our current situation. If they just have a bunch of counter spells, we're kind of toast. Okay, 
right, so this is the Mono Blue Tempo deck. They're going to be playing, at some point, they're going to be playing Crabs and Terrors and Illusions. Showcased this one last week. And um, it's a pretty spicy deck. And we can discard one of these, one with the multiverses. Probably just gets counterspelled anyway. Okay, so now we're basically toast. Jin, there's Jin. Okay. Now things are discounted for two blue. And I mean. They're just counterspelling it. And then bounce my guy. And we're dead. Okay, there we go. They weren't actually able to protect it. Surprised by that. All they needed to do was hit, I guess, another negate or something. I guess since they haven't played another island, there's at least a chance that we can actually survive two turns by blocking a gin. Seed of Hope into not a land. <laughs> okay. I guess we get one more draw at it, but we would need to kind of win the turn that we play it. If we can get Portal of Pyrexia down without a counterspell, that might do it. That's gonna be a good game. Crabbed. Okay, now we're talking. We can discard the Squirming Emergence with the Bitter Triumph. Seems doable. We want to start out on just milling four. The dream is to be able to hit two mills in one turn. So I don't know how aggressively I'm supposed to be mulliganing to hit two mulligans in one hand. Okay, in theory, this should be okay. It'll still have me discard the squirming emergence. Oh wait, maybe I was supposed to discard the portal. Oops, I wasn't supposed to discard squirming emergence. I was thinking I'd play it off of this, but it's probably not right. So Squirming Emergence can get back something for three. Which right now would be like, what, Jace? Yeah, I was supposed to do the portal. My bad. I think I was, at least. Because, uh... I want to bring, I want to use the squirming emergence to bring back the founding and then we hope we can kind of stabilize. Yeah. 
Uh, lizards could be a bit of a problem for this deck. Maybe that's why the Harvester of Misery is in here. have to cast the copy immediately, right? Oh, I do. Oh, wait. Okay. That was not ideal. Can we do one more turn? This is fun. We can't do the... Or we can do the ward, but we have to pay two life. Okay. Let's see if I can get it right this time around. But I need to do that sooner, though. So what I should have done is I should have I should have discarded the Portal of Phyrexia first so that I had the two copies of the Squirming Emergence. I should have played this one just as I did, but instead do the Mill 4. And then hope to get enough to be able to reanimate the Portal of Phyrexia with the other Squirming Emergence. Because now I have to wait two turns to be able to Portal Phy to Phyrexia, and I think I'm going to be dead. So that was, that was a bit of a learning curve there. My bad. If we had one more land, we would be able to harvest her and then not die. Okay. I think I have to do the Ravine Raider now? Let's see. Oh, wait, no. Hired Claw. If they go Pump Pump, I take 7 damage. If they attack here and Pump once, I take... Six damage, so I've got to do this now before they untap. Well, that's why the harvester's in there. You can use it for the discard ability. Please don't play multiple creatures, and please don't kill me this turn. It's a lot to ask. Just pump your hired claw. Pump the hired claw. Do it. Do it. I mean, they, they shouldn't because they should fire glass mentor. If they hit a creature, they can play here. Whew, nice. As long as they can't play a creature, everything's fine. They play a single creature, we're dead, because all three of these are lethal threats, so then I can't bring back the portal to Phyrexia. Okay. Very good. This time we'll actually cast it. And we'll bring back the portal. Okay. Now we just hope they don't have direct burn, because I'm going to bring back the Vaultborn Tyrant. And that can gain us some life. Mudflat Village, they can sack and play a creature. Oh gosh. They just offspring that and play a land. And that's where my punt... And I should have tried to do this a turn sooner, I think. Now, if they do the Vine Lasher and they don't play a land, 
what I can do is the Harvester of Misery. Oh. Okay. So I kind of have to... Hope that the life gains enough here. Okay, perfect. Yes, okay. Squirming Emergence allows me to get back Harvester. Do I want to get the Harvester down? I think I do because it just gets me that more that more life, right? I could try to hit the combo again. But I think with being at five life, I'd rather just get the harvester down. I guess the downside to that now is that my portal of Phyrexia doesn't have any hits. Whereas if I had gotten the, um, what's the, founding the third path, that that would have been more stabilizing. Do I have two harvesters? I do have two. Okay. Well, we can always get back their stuff too. I guess if they have more reanimation, let's check. They have restless vents. Okay. I think I just get back another har uh, Harvester of Misery. Vaultborn Tyrant is too good. Does it have Menace? It does have Menace. They activate this, they'd be doing two damage to me, which is a five turn clock. I'm dealing seven damage, which is a three turn clock. I think we just attack it. Okay. Okay, despite my puns, it got there. It got there. Didn't play it perfectly. Everything's okay. All right, here we go. All right, we've got enablers up at the wazoo. We just have to find. We have to find our... And we have the three mana to cast. We just need to find Squirming Emergence off of either one of these. We should be okay. Fewer, fewer, surveil, or damage. I guess we'll go with the tap land. Well, gosh, that was easy. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think there's an advantage to... I guess this one maximizes... We're going we're gonna to mill multiple times anyway, so... Do one of them. We just need to get to... Seven or nine. If we come up against another Kutzel's flanker, then... I'll be damned. White blue could be another control deck. Let's see if they have removal for the squirming emergence multiple times. That would be kind of a bummer. I think I'm going to go with the cruel somnophage here because if they counter it, I'd rather do the prankster. But I, I oh, the, no. That's right. I was thinking for a second it was like channel. <laughs> Alright, so now they have a counter spell up. We could try... Let's see, Mills at 7. Or, um, Scoring Emergence is at 7. So we could try bringing back a Bonnie Paul. Can't bring back a Portal. We could also try to bring back an Atali. Well, should we just see if they have it? 
they haven't been doing anything, I'm pretty sure they will. Could have played the uh, Yavmea Coast as well. So they have a counter spell here. I want to think more about whether or not we try to do it next turn. I think with one to give, like, it was okay to go for it. Okay, so now while they don't have any, uh, while they're while they're untapped and have a counter spell up, we'll just keep playing pixies and put out some threats that they have to deal with. Control seems like a tricky matchup for this one. Caretaker's talent, okay. So they didn't have, huh? They didn't have the one blue earlier. Maybe they've drawn into a negate. Portal of Phyrexia would be really good to get down. I'm going to go for it. And if they have an answer for it, then that's okay. We can pay the two if they do have an answer for this. Okay, things are looking good. Get lost doesn't hit Portal to Phyrexia. Okay, let's see. What would be their artifact in or artifact hate in blue white? I guess they could bounce the Portal to Phyrexia to my hand. Oh, they have Season of the Burrow. Okay. It's Dece. That's got to be the one card that can deal with the enchantment in, in white, right? I'm sure I'm missing something. Oh, uh, like Lauren of the Third Path and stuff, but like you don't usually see that in best of one. And again, you don't usually see Kuzel's Flanker. <laughs> Alright, so we've got two more Squirming Emergence. Which would be pretty nice to hit another portal. We still have all four of one with the multiverse not in the graveyard. So we got we got options. We got seven. Shall we see what attacking brings us? They are going to have a whole ton of bunnies here soon. Harvester of Misery would be really nice. Let's see if we can hit a Harvester. I want to just deploy threats here.
We'll save the bitter triumph for discarding something that we don't want in our hand. Probably should have done the picklock prankster first. So they did have no more lies that one turn. That's what they were holding up. Alright, so we're going to take 12 damage next turn. Oh, 15. Alright, so maybe attacking with the Tyrant was wrong. We can block. So we can take 9 damage so far? Ah, damn it. And then they can pop that to gain 3 life and create another token. Harvester of Misery would have been really nice to have hit. And now we just don't have anything in our hand for this. Womp a womp. Wait, there's a chance. And then we get... Oh no, wait, we don't have another... Dang it. I was like, if, if we could hit into... God, even Harvest... Like, I guess Harvester wouldn't have saved us, but... Do I want a Bonnie Paul? Let's think here. So if I block two, three of them, four of them, I'm only looking at taking six damage. I think this might be right. We had the portal to Phyrexia, that would have been nice. But they didn't have a negate. Gain six life, draw two cards. Can't cast anything, but this allows us to recast the Squirming Emergence next turn. No Surveil. I think with four blockers, we're okay. Even if they have one thing of removal, I still have three of them blocked and would take 12 damage. So I think I've got to try to push here. Oh, whoops. I would have been able to actually cast the squirming. Dang it, I should have, because I could play the, the wastes and then an untapped land here. Oh, that's too bad. I would have had to pick a blue, but I forgot I would have drawn. Forgot about the draw trigger on Bonnie Paul. Buddy. Do I even want to block with the pranksters? I guess if they have like a sunfall. I think I'm okay with trading the pranksters.
Okay, this has turned into an interesting game. We can't. We can also switch this around and become the milling deck, right? And we can just like aggressively mill our opponent because we could like Jace here for 15 and then bring it back with Squirming Emergence and do it again. Actually, we might be able to just win that way. Do we have another Jace in the graveyard? Okay, let's go for the alternative mill win. How about that? Much noise. I pull one thread, and your entire mind unravels. I like it. With style, they're going out on their terms. <laughs> oh, all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a fun deck, right? Um, it definitely has some matchups where it's a little bit trickier. The counter spell early to disrupt the combo. The early aggression of Mono Red uh, can prove difficult. We did beat Mono Red with the uh, cheesing out the Atraxa, but I think that was a little bit lucky from what I've seen, the data I've looked at, and my experience. Um, yeah, not not a new deck, but I think kind of a fun one right now, um, just because we don't have as much graveyard hate. So uh, remember to click like and subscribe, and uh, if you're new here, welcome, and uh, look forward to uh, looking at more off-meta picks on Sunday. And then I'll be doing my best of one, best of three meta review on Monday and the community deck techs on Tuesday. And uh, then I'll be off for my break and I will see you guys all in a week. So I guess it'll be two weeks. Um, your your guys' time. So um, I'll be gone from for a little bit, but I'll be back. Don't you worry. And then um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get the um, Duskmorn um, pre-release -re pre guide done before I leave. So um, look for that. I'm aiming to get it done by Friday. And um, that'll just be kind of things if you are interested in pre-release. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. And I will catch you all tomorrow to talk about this week's Metabreakers.